Hi, we're recording on this computer. So good morning, ladies. How are you? Doing fine, thank you. Good. And Colleen is going to teach us something fun today. I'm ready. We're just going to jump right into it. All right. I'll introduce myself for those who may not know, and why don't you if you don't? I'm Colleen from Colleen's Those and Chats, and we're going to make a hanging towel today with a piece band. I'm not Very teaching. Cool. Pardon me? I said it's very cool. Cool. I, I'm not teaching how to do the paste, paste band on its own. It's two and a half inches by eight inches, unfinished. So it's pieced, and then I used flannel inside instead of batting, and then a backing, all two and a half by eight inches. Put You're it together, to chuck it out. Band? Hmm? You're supposed to pad the band. I didn't know that. You don't have to. I just do. I used interfacing the first time, and I like the stiffness that it gave it, but I don't want to use interfacing every time. Oh, okay. Makes sense. The original... The original video I saw doing a band was just one piece of fabric folded over into quarters. So I figured I wanted a little bit more back there than just the two pieces for the back of the front. Okay. Yeah, not, not that one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that one. And I'm marking, this doesn't have a top, but I am marking if you're using something with a top or a bottom, or like the one you just showed, Sylvia has a seam underneath. I, yep. would, I would mark the top somehow. I tend to miss my pens and miss my clips. My plastic clips get in the way, so I just use a regular binder clip. So I know this is the top of my band. So the, the open edge is going to yep. be the bottom. Right. No, yep. Yep. Oh, good luck. Oh, oh, no, I'm moving really. my camera. Oh, right, okay. Didn't think you guys wanted to go wee. Okay. We can go for a ride. Yep. And then for the backing, I'm calling it the backing. I meant to have one in here. It's the top of the towel. I'm just using a single piece, seven by 17, because I like that measurement better. You can do a pieced part right here. In fact, I have a video coming up where I've done it in two pieces and have different on each side, but that's another story. So one piece, seven by 17, because I like the way it hangs better. Half of a towel, just a regular old, this is a Tarig towel. I also have flower sack towels that I could do them on, and I will eventually. Got it from Walmart. In fact, I think it's, well, this one's better homes and garden. I was feeling fancy. <laughs> and this one I will be keeping. So half of a towel, all I did was fold the entire towel in half. Let's tell us. Fold the entire towel in half and cut down the center. Then you have half the towel. Start by prepping the towel. I used, I used oh. two pieces of fabric on that one. That's cool. That's a, yeah. Oh, that's pretty. You used regular cotton yardage, right? Oh, yeah. Yardage. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen them done like that. And it's very customized when you do that. Very unique. That's the word I was looking for. Mm. Pretty, pretty. But I'm just, I'm using a towel and there's ones where you can use an entire towel since I'm selling most of these. Why would I want to use an entire towel when I can use a half towel? That makes sense. Mm. Mm. And need something to mark with. To get the pleats, I thought that was going to be hard. I thought the pleats were going to be hard. Let's get the wrong side of the towel facing, or the cut side of the towel facing away from me. And I'm going to fold it in half. Edge to edge, mark the center, fold. It broke my chunk. Just put a little line. So you know it's there, you could use a pen to mark that. Then folding the right edge into the center line that you just created. I'm gonna mark this fold too. I 
And then you're gonna do it one more time, right edge to that mark, marking that fold. And repeat on the left side. Take the left edge, bring it over to the center, mark that fold, then bring that edge to the fold you just marked. Mark that fold. So now you have a center line and two lines on either side of the center. Now I'm gonna turn it sideways. With the raw edge on my right, I don't know if I do this because I'm right-handed or wet, but it, it works for me. If you're left-handed, turn it around. I think it'll be okay. Wrong side, still facing up. Grab, pinch, the mark closest to the center. You can see the yellow. I can see my mark point out right there. And pull it to the mark you made in the center. Are you using pens or clips? I'm using clips for this because of the bulk. And that's what that looks like on the other side, just to uphold. And while I'm up here, I'm going to fold this edge over to the other line, closest to it, and clip it, lining your edges up as best you can. And repeat on the other side. Pinch, so you can see the line. That's how I remember to do it anyway. Pull it to the center so it meets up to that other piece in the center you just did. Clip all those layers. Very cool. And then I, I did not realize making pleats was so easy. Then you bring the outer edge to the next mark closest to it like the other side, and clip it. Now you have your edges even up here. I'm gonna do a stay stitch, which is just a simple stitch. A factory setting is 2.5 on this. A quarter inch away or less because your next seam is gonna be larger. But you're doing a regular length stitch on it. You're not doing like a long basting stitch. No, you could. Okay. I'm just too lazy to change it many times. Turn it on again. Definitely use a long basting. It's just something to keep it in place so I'm not struggling with these trying to come apart like that on me. I do like that little edge folded in too. Pardon me? Where you've done at the very edge of it folded it in just a little bit. I like that. Oh, yeah. that edge, okay. I like it. I, I was gonna leave it off, but I like the, I like how it looks with it on. Fold it over like that. Don't need a back stitch. It's just a stay stitch. It's not gonna show. It's gonna be in your seam allowance. Flip your threads. And now you've got the back of the towel and the front of the towel. Awesome. A little, oops, basting stitch right there. We focused right there. I put the band in last. That's what I do different because I'm using a pieced band. It makes sense to my brain to put the band in last. So now we're going to add the, I'm calling it the top backing piece. <laughs> You want the right side seventeen inches this way, seven inches this way. You want the right side of that fabric facing up, and the right side of your towel facing up. So you can make sure you've got that by looking at your edges, the finished edges over here. and I start getting picky, trying to get it in there. And now, line up, 
turn it this way so you guys can see. Line up your edges. And this towel is approximately six inches. More or less, the measure, measurement isn't very important. That's a great angle too. It's really easy to see what you're doing. And the band was cut at seven inches. So we've got a half inch overhang on either side. What I do is I make sure that I keep it because I am not good at eyeballing it. I measure my half inch and then clip it on either yep. side. So you're not putting the towel on that last half inch on each side. Right. Good. You want the towel inside the half inch. This is going to fold over and make your edge. So I move them in because I'm not good about eyeballing it. And I clip it. And I clip the center because the towel tends to pull that down. So you'll have something that looks like that. Put that a half inch here and a half inch here. Remember all your right sides are up right now. Then it's like a, a burrito pillow, pillow burrito. Yeah, that's what I thought, the burrito pillowcase. Get your sides all in. You don't have to do it all nice and straight like this. Yeah, just wad them up. It's fine. <laughs> and then you fold it upward. You don't need to go all the way to the top. You just need to make enough room for this piece to go over. And you're going to line this piece up with those pieces. Go with the burrito. In fact, I think it's more useful if you don't roll it all the way up because you've got the space right here to work with. That's... Then I line up my edges of my topper backing fabric right here, that half inch right there. And instead of making two passes where I make one pass and sew this down and then make another pass where I turn this over, I do it all. I turn this half inch over, keep my edges all together and clip it. Okay. And then I'll do the other side. And when you do that flipped over edge, does it matter which direction you turn it? No, I just, I turn them towards me just because it seems easier. Okay. And when I sew it, that side will be facing up. There is no rhyme or reason for that. You can make them face down if you want. I like to know they are where I put them. Okay. So I like to that see them. Sense. And I'm going to reclip the center because like I said, it tries to drag on me. So now we have a very cute diaper? little. Yes, diaper. And I am using, I'm using the outer edge of my quarter inch foot for the next line. It's a little bit more than the quarter inch. You could use a half inch. You could, you, you could use what, you know, anything over a quarter inch because of that first seam we sewed, uh, that stay stitch. Little you want, stay stitch, okay. Right. You want that inside. I just don't like changing my foot a bunch of times, so I just stick with the one. Line it up on that outer side of the foot. Don't judge me. Works as a hump jumper. <laughs> I put my ruler back there next to the fabric, but not next to the needle. And my stitch is still at 2.5. It's a lot of bulk, so I figure that's a good one for it. I'm going to go forward. Then I'm going to go backward. If you use the universal foot, it should jump this on its own. I like to be I usually just let that fall and there's a nice clean. So basically, you're using your ruler as a hump jumper. 
Right. Uh, Improvised hump jumper is what I call it. Cool. Keep all your layers together underneath that needle. I think Sylvia is sewing along with you. Yeah. Oh, had something pop up on me. I need to get that down. So that's what we've got. We've got a diaper. We yeah. basically have a diaper. See this little pocket right here, this little pocket right here? I'm pointing them out because they matter not at all. Not at all. You want to make sure that you got your towel in there. Looks like Sylvia's caught right up with you, too. Woohoo! Go, girl. Then I put my left hand in to grab the towel burrito and hold the fabric with my right hand and separate them. It turns this one most of the way out for me. Give that a yank, a gentle yank. <laughs> I say, and then my fabric rips. It helps sit that up. So, oh goodness. I took the spotlight off of you so we could see Sylvia's. Yay! She got Sylvia. Oh, that's pretty. I, I like, like that. Your colors are great. And then this side, we'll fold. This is the side I fidget with a lot. I'm not going to fidget so much with this. Fold under about a half inch. Where you started it down there, it's going to want to fold on its own. So you just need to give it some help in the center. I pin and clip because I'm extra. And if you want to be extra, extra, you can use your mat, line up the top side, and line up this on one of the lines to make sure it's straight. Mine is. And I'm going to do the other side. See, very little effort once I get this half inch side over here, fold it under, it wants to fold under. It wants to go the way I want it to go. Now, couldn't you just hit that with the iron and avoid the pinning altogether? You could, but I'm gonna have to pin it to take it to the iron because it's gonna slip out on me. Ah. If you don't have that problem, I would just take it to the iron. Very nice, very nice. Do I remember how to do this? Because I'm gonna do it wrong. Now on either side of the band that you're using, I mark a half inch. You can eyeball it. Bring you back up spotlight again so we can see that. Mark a half inch down on your band. Okay. You can eyeball it. I really am bad at eyeballing. I would do at least a half inch though. This is a friction pen. In theory, it's gonna go away when I do iron it or wash it. Wash. That's really say it, right? Wash. That's how they said it where I came from. Or Sylvia stuck here with us. I'm having, I'm having to show me band because I haven't done that bit. Okay. If you're doing a, a band like Sylvia, you just do a, a quarter inch all the way around it. Keep all your fingers together that way. You don't have okay, to worry about I'll show yours. I did mine with embroidery and then managed to put it on upside down. That's why I'm using the clip. 
I did that with this first one that I did embro embroidery on, and it was in and out about five, six times before I got it right. Yeah. That's... If you haven't done that, hey, leave it in the comments because you're special. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> if you haven't sewed this on upside down and or backwards, leave it in the comments because you're special. Yeah. It's definitely a trial and error thing. I sold a dozen before I realized that I wasn't making them exactly like I could. They still work. They still work. It's just a little more fiddly than what it should have been. <laughs> this is the next bit, though, is getting it the right way right. in, isn't it? So take, yeah. the take your fabric, the top, right side. You can see which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side. So all you have to do is... I'm taking this clip. You can pin it if the pen gets your attention. Unless it's stabbing me, it's not going to get my attention. It's probably too late by then. Take a pen or a clip, or you can take a friction pen and just mark a little X. I'm not going to see that. I'm not going to notice it. Mark your top side, and you see your right side. So when you take it over here, you've got your top side right here. Flip it down. Now this is wrong side up and upside down. Okay. Okay. And I, I know you have you put it right next to the fold or you, a little bit below yeah. the fold. It's going to go right next to the fold, but right now I'm just getting it directional. Right. Directionally, that's that's how I want it. And I'm going to sew one side, go around, then sew the other side in and finish up. So I'm not fighting this band as much against my machine. That's why, one of the many, many reasons, I put it in last. You could give this a press, like Melissa said. I'm not going to for time's sake. So you've got this directionally. This is how you want it. Yeah, Top yeah. facing down. Fold up here. I'm going to fold this, turn this out. This is how we want it. I'm going to turn this out and I'm going to put this half inch in the side, which I pin too close to. So now I have to move. Don't judge. Top facing down, pretty side facing in. I guess I could have put my marks on this side of it, but I put my marks on this side. So I could get it in, I okay. see that. Okay. in the quarter, here. half an inch. Snug it up next to the top of that band. And I'm gonna clip that. And since I've got it nice and snug there, my line marked, I'm gonna clip below it too. That helps make sure it doesn't shift up or down on me. I mean, and you can to my computer like it's gonna make me be able to see it. <laughs> so wait till you start looking around your computer. Yeah. <laughs> Playing games online. My husband, myself, and my son. All one time we were in a battleground. We were trying to each of us were doing this, trying to see around the computer like we were gonna see where the other guys were. So you've got your half inch line inside your fold. And I start at the top. I actually am going to change my foot for this because I like it closer and I can't see to get closer. The universal foot, where's my fancy pointer? Fancy pointer. The universal foot has a line. That's where your needle goes, center line. And then you can, there is a line out here next to this. That's the line I'm going to be using for a top stitch. Okay. That's hard to see, but if you look at your foot in front of you, you can see a line to the left and a line to the right. The one to the right is where my seam is gonna, my fold is gonna lay. So it's just a top stitch. That's not fancy, but it certainly looks finished and pretty. I'm sure that you haven't messed your band up since you're wiggling it around like a crazy woman. I'm just picking a point at the top. 
I'm choosing closer to this edge because I, there's no, no reason. I'm doing three stitches forward and then three stitches back for the back stitch because I noticed if I overdo it like I like to, forward, back, forward, back, I get bunching. We don't want bunching on the back. I remove this clip. I'll grab the camera and move it here in a second. I'll be right back, ladies. Okay. And I'm doing a top stitch all the way around. And I still have it at 2.5 because when I change it, clips as I get to them. Pack fabric wanted to come forward just a little bit over here because I didn't press it. Just wad the towel up, roll it up if you're proper. A little separation pull. And the line on the towel right here is the one I'm using for my top stitch. The outer line is the one I'm following. I'm still doing a top stitch. All right, I'm back. What? I said I'm back, sorry. You were missed. I almost had a nervous breakdown. Thank you for returning. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I had to go avert a nervous breakdown in the other room. Hard when you're sick. And you're male. Got that? And still top stitching, and we still got this side over here loose and flopping in the wind. Wiggling. Hmm? Flopping in the wind. Yep. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> Didn't quite make it over as far as I should have there. So I picked it up and I moved it over. And you want to stop before that band goes in. I almost did not make it. At this point, I take my band. I'm going to turn. I'm not going to turn. Take the band straight out here, fold it over, then turn the side under because it's going to go in. Pretty side facing up. This is Philip. Oh, I can't think of the word. I should not have sewn that far up to the band. Normally I would have done it halfway. So you're going to have to sing the seam ripper song? I think I have just enough room. I have just enough room. And I'm lining that other half inch line up. If you sew up halfway on the side, you can see it better. Snug it up to the fold. And if you pinch where the top is on the fold with your fingers, if you just pinch right there, it'll be fine. Okay. Bar got my finger. That was unpleasant. Pull the band towards you as you sew the edge of it down. Okay. 
And then when you get to the top here, when you turn it, the band is going to be on your right hand side out of the way. So you didn't sew over top of the band, you sewed under it. Right. That makes sense. Okay. I pulled the. I sewed over. I did this. It didn't make sense. I to sewed over it. No, I sewed over it. She can show us once she gets done stitching. You sewed right over it. Oh, fuck. I sewed over mine when I did it, too. So here. I'm going to... I don't think it makes any difference, though. It will still... I don't yeah. think it makes a difference, either. I was just curious, because I had seen one version where they were very careful about not sewing over the band. I'm pulling the band this way, so I'm actually, I'm just going over it the same way I did the first side. Right, so they match, that makes sense. Right, come over here and then go down. Once again, I'm craning in on <laughs> trying to see. It may take a couple. But the band, I'm holding the band with these fingers to keep it from catching that bar like my finger did. Yeah. Because it makes noise and it's unpleasant. It hurts. Ask me how I know. <laughs> then you have to turn it a little bit. I try to turn, pull the threads that I have from when I started. Pull them that way so they're not caught anywhere weird. And so over the threads where I started and then back stitch a couple times. And that's it. Whoops. I managed to get my foot off with that. And if you back stitch, all you have to do is clip your threads. I am obnoxious. I'm going to bury my threads just like we do on quilting. So when it's I lost a pin. I'm going to find it with my foot. I guarantee it. So when it's done, oh, I'm sorry. The pleated, pretty pleated side is over here. Your band is going to turn like that. So when you put it on the stove, wrong side to the stove, pull it over. You can start with the band the other direction if you wanted to. The band will flip and now oh. I fiddle with them. I like them to learn way <laughs> certain direction. Now the top of your band is where it's supposed to be and it's one roll. So plenty of room for that. There to get grungy. And in case you've got a, you want to lay it flatter because I gave us a couple more inches there. You can have it laying a little bit longer. Snug it right up on that bar too. I love it. Yeah. Oh look, she's even got. A fake stove handle to put it on. Look at us go. That came out really great. If you find that this piece of fabric is too long for your tasting, for your, we all know what I mean. I'm going to stop trying to correct myself. <laughs> you can make this piece of fabric a little bit shorter. I liked it longer. I'm seeing Sylvia's over there too. I'm sorry. I brought it mm -hmm. back down so we could see yours too. Put you up there in the spotlight. So pretty, pretty, see all pretty. those. Well, those go well together too. Well, I figured I could still embroider on that bit. Yeah, um, because, especially since you hand embroider. Because, this, because it would be hidden. Uh -huh. Whereas, whereas that one is hidden because it's inside. Yeah. The fold, it's but. easy. Just after you get the um, two and a half inch, because I'm allowing for a seam allowance up here. Flip it over. Do some quilting, do some embroidering. Put the name of the month there. Mm. Yeah. Do not and like mine, but mine definitely is the wrong side up if I turn my towel the right side. 
And that's something else. The flower sack towels, I don't like to use them because they're so thin. I like to have the thicker part up there. But you could even take the towels, and this one's not cut in half, and do smaller pleats, more pleats, whatever, and have a smaller topper. Well, the one thing about flower sack towels is especially if you do a lot of canning or if you're on a farm and you have to clean milk mm -hmm. after a, an animal's been milked, mm -hmm. they're thin enough that you can use them as cheesecloth, but they're yeah. way less expensive. Yeah. You can reuse these and wash them. I only use my flower sack towels. I only use them for covering rolls. And this is very ineffective for covering a sheet of rolls. <laughs> so I need them open. But I am going to make these into hangers too, because some people do like them. So Just do you even have flower sack towels in Great Britain? No. I didn't think so. I'd never heard of them over there. No, I've, I, I looked on... Um... Amazon when you mentioned didn't you mention them before didn't you Renata and yeah. just they're not uh, you put it in and all that comes up with these tea towels um, but the problem with this pack that I bought um, it came with um, two others but they've already got an embroidery an embroidery on them that's pretty embroidery it's on the bottom though yeah Oh, so, yeah, so it would still be there if you have them. I'm thinking about doing yeah, some but it'll only be on one. Part of the towel for mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should only be on one. Yeah, it's only on one corner. So, so yeah, it should only be on on one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, but that would be a good opportunity to find a little kind of like a ribbon piece to put along the bottom of the other one. Yeah. Or to decorate the other towels somewhat. Oh, you can do all kinds of embellishments on these. Yeah. I doubt that, that, a big that, investment. That one, if you put that one in now. In the US, Sylvia, I like up, those. The dragonfly would be upside down, wouldn't it? No, the yeah, dragonfly would be right side up. If you didn't mind the waist, you could cut that towel and then sew it back together to get that design centered. That makes sense? Right, yeah. Yeah. If you didn't mind the waist, and I probably wouldn't mind it if I really wanted that centered. But anyway, yeah. ladies. Okay. I think that we've to learned how to do it. Thank you for teaching us, Colleen. I appreciate Thank you. it. And I'm going to say good day to you ladies. I've got to go help with that. Don't forget to check out each of our channels. This because we're going to be doing awesome. lots of these. Yep, they're going to go up on each channel, and we're going to be showing you lots of variations over the course of the next couple of months. Get creative and grab a towel. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.